Hello friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you're back. If you are new, hi, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they them. Thank you so so much for clicking on my video today. I am super excited to bring you this video though I'm embarrassed because it is definitely late. I know that this vlog series hasn't been like the most popular on my channel but I really really appreciate all the incredibly sweet comments and people that have um, been tagging along on all the vlogoing adventures so I really really just want to say thank you so so much for tuning in. Um, this is the actual last one of the year but um, I will be hoping to bring you a new whole season next year. This vlog is just going to be kind of focused on Kate and I's annual spooky camping trip. We're going to go to the pumpkin patch, abandoned corn maze, do a lot of like rainy camping. It's super cozy, super fun, and I really hope you enjoy. I'll be sure to link my whole vlogoween playlist below if you're interested in more of this kind of content. But for now, I just wanted to say thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. So early in the morning on October 16th, Cage and I were off for our annual road trip. And last year we had taken this same sort of trip much earlier in the year, uh, during September. As we were driving out, I was really concerned because while the pine trees were obviously still green and beautiful, so many of the aspens and birches were completely bare, which does give a beautiful haunting look. But I do have to say my favorite part of autumn is those incredible bright colors. As we drove out, there were little smatterings of them that was definitely giving me hope. We stopped at a really sweet local cafe in Banff for a little bit of breakfast. We had this vegan mushroom and hummus toast. And the first official like proper stop on the list was at this really beautiful historic cemetery that we had discovered last year. Previously when we had gone, everything was in full bloom, but this time all the foliage was really ready to kind of go to sleep for the winter. And it was really wonderful to see this really peaceful, serene place with these darker tones, the crunchier leaves and the completely barren trees. I think since the last time we had gone, they had remodeled a lot of the headstones since they looked a lot more modern than I remember them. And it was a beautiful spot to be. The first time we had gone, most of the graves were encased by these old kind of dilapidated small fences. This time a lot of those had been replaced with these white crosses made sort of of metal. Though the fence ones are incredibly beautiful, I understand the need to kind of update things for structural sake. It's an absolutely beautiful space to explore and I love the fact that historic cemeteries like this tend to be a little bit forgotten when they're off on these dirt roads and nature has a chance to kind of grow over everything, to cover things with thick blankets of moss and almost tiny microscopic worlds. I think one of my favorite things to do when looking at moss is imagine all the beautiful little fairy homes that could exist in there. It was really special to just wander around in silence together and appreciate all of the beautiful mix of nature and historic graves. There's no better time than the autumn to visit cemeteries and I really felt like we got a proper fill of them this year. We got to visit a lot of different ones, some that were new, some that were old to us, and each of them had its own extremely special charm and I feel very lucky to have been able to explore all of them. This one just nestled and tucked away into the woods felt incredibly magical. There were a lot of little squirrels scampering around, mushrooms growing all over things, headstones that mirrored each other having the same motifs and symbols. A lot of the headstones were broken and Cage and I had been listening to the graveyard book um, as like an audiobook on the way over since this drive is so long and I tend to download a lot of free library audiobooks to listen to on the way. So it felt really wonderful to make this our first official spot and really appropriate with the book that we had been listening to. It's one of our favorite autumn reads and it was our first time listening to it together last year. We were both really happy to listen to it again. Once we were done with the graveyard portion, we decided to explore the little park sort of area that's next to it. There's this wonderful running river right beside the cemetery and these massive train tracks. The river has this intensely teal water that looks like it's fake or something. And the whole area is just completely covered with trees on every side. It's a very, very special place to be in. And if I remember correctly from the signs, it was saying that it was one of the kind of oldest, like pioneer sort of cemeteries that existed in this part of Canada. So that's kind of interesting, I guess. Once we were done with that cemetery, it was on the road again, and the further and further we were getting to BC, the more and more yellow trees that were like starting to appear around us, and I just was feeling so comforted because when we were leaving, I was like, oh no, we missed the autumn, it's all over, it's all done, none of the trees here are yellow anymore, but driving into the mountains and seeing them all 
in their full glory. It was just absolutely enchanting and magical and I was so grateful that we had decided to go on this trip during the time that we did. Though there was a lot more kind of like rain and like foggy moody weather to worry about or there would have been if we were like camping in a tent. We just like to camp in our car. <laughs> so it makes things a lot easier and I personally really like the rain. I know it's not ideal for outdoor situations but it's so cozy that like I can't be too mad at it. Getting to drive out, occasionally have a little bit of rain on the windshield, listening to Neil Gaiman's voice and watching the autumn colors just like slowly seep back into the world when like my current hometown was completely devoid of them. I just, oh, I was living my absolute dream. The next town we had to stop in for gas, I decided to check if there were any cemeteries around, and there was one just off the highway. It was incredibly large and beautiful and completely empty, with a lot of these flat bed gravestones on the ground. Um, I think there were more of those than I'd ever seen in one spot um, in any cemetery. As usual, since we were getting closer into BC, the mosses and the mushrooms were absolutely enchanting. I think there's just something so completely beautiful about mosses growing over headstones, gravestones, nameplates, just slowly kind of becoming one with the earth sort of thing. It makes me feel a bit like I'm entering some sort of fairy realm. Going at this time of year to places, I felt like we were truly the only ones in a lot of it, and it was really haunting and beautiful. There were so many different little flowers to explore, so many different varieties of leaves to look at. It was a exciting, delightful time. If I remember correctly, this was called the Mountain View Cemetery, and um, it was really, really nice. We eventually arrived to the location that we were camping at, though, and it was the same spot we stayed at last year, though when we came, it was a day after camping fees stopped being collected so we got to stay there for free so that was really cool it's this lovely spot right across a lake and i think there was like one other rv in the park that we never really saw anyone in so despite that we were kind of completely alone out there and it was absolutely fantastic i think we arrived at the campsite around 4 p.m and got the fire started pretty quick since it was gonna rain soon we got our hot dogs toasting and I think by like 7 p.m. it was completely dark out. We were just cozy around the fire, chatting away and enjoying the sounds of the crackling and the warmth and the beautiful glow of the embers together. Luckily we had gotten the car all set up already, though getting it set up just means unrolling the mattress and putting a blanket down, plus turning on the little string lights that Cage very thoughtfully put up. Uh, but it was a good thing that we had done that because I think by like 8 p.m. it had started raining and not just like a little spitting, tiny, gentle little rain. It was full on hardcore pouring down. So it was time to retreat into the car and we pretty much hung out in there staying warm and snuggly together like all night. I had brought uh, my old copy of Coraline because I don't think Cage had ever read it so I read that to him for about maybe like half an hour and we ended up going to bed really early. The sound of the rain was just so incredibly soothing and uh, we just decided to get an early start on the next morning. The weather was significantly nicer in the morning and we got started with a nice fresh coffee and a little walk down to the lake. The water was so incredibly clear and calm that it was pretty much like a perfect mirror, especially earlier in the morning before we had managed to film. Cage was saying that it reminded him of a portal and I completely agree. It was a very, very magical thing to witness. We just got to hang out there in the morning and enjoy a little bit of hot coffee and tea while we watched a couple of the ducks float across the pond and the waves ripple around. After a while we were done with just looking at the beautiful view and we wanted to start exploring it. So we decided to walk around the pond to see if there were any interesting leaves or rocks to look at, some nice insects, maybe a little something to forage, and we found this incredible spot. It almost felt like a little island of trees that had like the lake kind of surrounding it on both sides, so you felt completely enclosed of the, with this like green water. 
and it was absolutely breathtaking. Across the pond you could see all these yellow leaves and beautiful trees, and there were massive rose bushes on the sides of the cliffs with their berries like slowly drying out and turning like all rotten and dark red and beautiful. There were loads of mossy trees and different colored saps. The sunshine reflecting off the water, the clouds floating overhead, it was just an absolute delight for us. I got to just sit and enjoy the sunshine on my skin and look at the beautiful green water and Cage got to explore a little bit with his little drone. <laughs> I feel so lucky that we live so close to British Columbia and though I miss living there because I did um, go to school here um, and, I, and I do miss it a lot. It's so nice when we get to visit. There is just the the nature out there is so incredible. I feel like the trees get so much bigger. The flowers have like so much more variety. The fruit is absolutely incredible. It was just a really, really special place to be together. I feel so incredibly lucky to be able to take this trip. I know Cage and I want to make this an annual thing and I feel so much joy that I have a partner that is willing to just take like three days off with me to go explore the pumpkins, to look at the nature, to really just try to appreciate and soak in this very short and beautiful season. It's so incredible that we live so close to BC where the autumn just like extends a little longer than ours so like even when it's done where I'm living I can just drive a little bit further out and experience it all over again. That's like... <laughs> I don't know, that's too cool that I, I get to have that. I, it's such a short season, I think that might be why it's so special to me because it's so fleeting and so magical. So to be able to just like extend it a little bit longer feels, um, I don't know, I feel like I'm cheating, it's, it's too good. <laughs> Last year when we had gone on this trip, it was a lot earlier in the year, like I said, so a lot of the trees weren't yellow and there was just something so enchanting about getting to see the forests like in their kind of just after their full bloom. I know a lot of the leaves had completely fallen off already, but there were so many gorgeous colors to still see. The wonderful red berries, the different leaves, the teals of the water and the clouds reflecting off of it. It felt like we were in a fairy tale, in a storybook, just in some completely other magical world. As Cage is always looking for little specimens for his bug art, we were looking around to see if there were any dried flowers that were in abundance that we could forage and we did find a nice little handful. You can see here there were also a lot of nice um, mushrooms to explore and eventually we decided to go into town to get a little bit of a pick-me-up before we explored our other locations. We found this super cute coffee house called Anvil Coffee. Outside we met this wonderful chocolate lab that reminded Cage of his childhood dog and it was just really special to see. I love when doggies are all like old and gray in the muzzle, it's so cute. <laughs> But we were on our way to our next location, which was the Log Barn. This is a place that has a bunch of goats. It's got like a little gift shop and a coffee shop. But the reason that I like to go is because it has all these super cool carved uh, statues. My favorites are obviously the dragons. They're so freaking good, but they've got gorillas and bears and uh, weird tigers and pirates and all sorts of stuff. Not only do they have goats, but of course also like llamas and other farm animals like that. But it was really, really cool to go. <laughs> Um, I try to visit this place every time I'm like passing through because um, it's just a lot of fun. It, I, I live for weird little tourist traps like this kind of thing. Like if, if you got a big dragon, some weird throne, some strange pirate man, like give me a ticket. I want to see it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so it was really, really cool to get to see that, especially with the autumn colors all around it. I'd never seen it at this time of year, like with this proper, proper autumn foliage. And that was just super special. One of the best parts of the place is the original kind of display, which is these very weird taxidermy tigers. Um, I love them. And I don't know if this was new or if I just hadn't seen it before, but they had this little mini like garden maze that we got to visit. So I 
I really, really enjoyed that. All of the flowers in it, or like most of them, were completely dead, so that was fantastic. And they had these massive tomato plants with huge fruits on them that were completely keeling over the entire plant, so they were just like on the ground. The colors were like that wonderful brown, rusting, orange, yellow, like all those wonderful like dying leaf colors, and the smell is indescribable. I, I love the smell of rotting foliage, it's so good. If anyone has a recommendation for like a perfume or a fragrance that is like proper rotting leaves, because I feel like lots of times it'll say rotting leaves, but it'll just kind of smell like men's cologne. So if anyone has a good recommendation for something that actually smells like rotting leaves, please let me know. It was really, really wonderful to get to hang out. One of my favorite spots that we found was this massive uh, red leaf tree. I don't know what kind of tree it was, but it felt like something out of a movie. Like this entire place, this entire season and the places that we've gone, I just, I feel like I'm in a film, like in some really cute 1980s, like little fall time adventure. It's just, uh, oh, it was so special. It's, it's so cool to get to make these memories with Cage. The gardens that they maintain are absolutely wonderful and I love Love when people just let the flowers in there die naturally. They have all these very interesting little knickknacks everywhere, birdhouses, wind chimes, cow skulls, and little weird dinosaurs. I just, uh, it was a delight. I, I love this place and it was really, really fun to get to visit with Cage. Now, the next spot that I really wanted to visit while we were in O'Keefe was this kind of historical building that has a corn maze next to it. Now, there was a sign outside that said the corn maze was open, so I was like, all right, let's go. When we went in, it all appeared to be like they had mowed the entire corn maze down and like there was nothing left of it. And I was like devastated, super, super sad about it. And they had all these kind of like abandoned looking food trucks next to it. And I was like, you know what? Let's just, you know, poke around. Like there's no one here. Like it should be fine. Despite the fact that it said it was open, we decided, you know what? There's, it's fine. Let's just go explore or a teensy tiny. Pretty much they had mowed down like 90% of the corn maze and all that was left was this one little corner but we decided to walk into it and it was just during the day so we went through and into the corn maze and it was absolutely fantastic. Last year when we had gone all the corn was green and there weren't any Halloween decorations in it because I guess it hadn't been like properly set up yet but this year all the corn was incredible and yellow and just fantastic and beautiful it was completely deserted and we were definitely worried that like someone was going to come yell at us and be like hey like get out of here it's it's closed but everything was fine and it was completely haunting I had been a little bit sad when we had previously gone to a corn maze kind of closer to home because the corn was like maybe like four feet tall in most parts, but here it was enormous and I was so happy that we decided to wander in because when we had seen that it was mostly mowed down, we didn't see the little corner of corn that was still up, so we thought that it was just like gone completely and we were so devastated and like just having poked around, it was a complete delight and just absolutely magical that we were able to get in because there wasn't any like you know fences or things like that it was really windy and overcast so the leaves were constantly rustling and it felt incredibly spooky there were lots of different scarecrows that they had put up with really cheesy like fake blood effects and stuff but there were also these like blank scarecrow posts that i don't know if you're supposed to go on them yourself but that's kind of what i interpreted it as and it was really fun to get to like cosplay as a scarecrow for a hot minute yeah, super, super cool. I'd never seen corn stalks that were like so dark purple before. And also these ones were just like so tall. It was an incredible delight. And I was so, so happy that we had wandered in. We totally did get lost and it took a hot minute to find our way out. Plus it had started raining a bit. So it was like extra spooky and like, oh God, we got to get out of here. Between visiting it last year when it was all green and visiting it this year when it was like yellow and all the Halloween decorations were in it, it was like both were incredible, but I was so happy that we decided to go at this time of year. On our second day, we wanted to find a different campground, one that was a little bit closer to the orchards that we were going to. And after a lot of searching, we found this one RV park. We got the best spot, I'd say, right on the water. There was this gorgeous yellow tree with overhanging leaves and the most beautiful lake right across from us. It was called Swan Lake and it had really, really nice green water. They had these free little paddle boats that you could take out 
and Cage and I definitely had to go ahead and try that out. It was super fun to just float around and look at all the different willow trees, look at the RVs, the little ducks and the insects flapping past. There's something really relaxing about being on the water and having it be so overcast and seeing the reflection of those gray clouds around us just made me feel like we were floating on some sort of magic fairy river, you know? Across the pond we could see all these little houses and it honestly felt a little bit like what I imagined the English countryside to feel like a little bit. Just like beautiful overcast, all these really quaint little houses on the hill and just the water all around us. There was something about it that definitely made me feel like we were in one of those old thrifted paintings of like kind of the early city. When we got back on land we did some exploring around and there was this one guy um, near us who had a giant kind of cage in the back of his RV with, with all these like pet toys and stuff in it. We couldn't figure out what it was for until we noticed that he had a Bengal cat that he had brought out. Um, it was on a little harness and he had it on a leash and it was so sweet and chattery and like climbing up on the trees and stuff. I just was like this guy is living his best life. It was so fun to see. Eventually we were settling in for the night and we got our nice big fire going. Having those giant trees around us and the lake there made me feel like we were totally in a movie. It was the perfect kind of cozy sweater weather and we could feel like that the rain was like about to roll in. You know when the air gets really rich because it's about to rain, it feels like you've lit a bunch of beeswax candles or something and there's just like that wonderful energy charge that you can feel in the air. It was fantastic. Also, ever since I'd watched one of Darling Desi's uh, autumn videos this year, I'd been needing to try this s'mores croissant creation that she had made. So it was time to do that. I had these vegan marshmallows, vegan chocolate, and vegan croissants that I had brought from home. And it was time to just toast everything over the fire. It was the most delicious, delightful little sandwich creation. I can't believe I've never tried something like this before. Cause honestly, I love chocolate and marshmallows, but I don't like graham crackers. So this was an absolutely perfect um, way to kind of experience the s'moreness without the graham crackers ruining it for me. Super, super tasty. Cage and I split this one in half and then we had another one <laughs> later. <laughs> then it was time to honestly just sit around the fire and watch the beautiful smoke as the sky darkened around us and we could still see all those lights reflecting off of the water from all those little houses across the lake. Getting to sit there and listen to the fire crackle, the crickets around us, all the little birds and kind of autumnal evening sounds was an absolute delight. Cage and I got to sit around the fire and read a little bit together, but then again, of course, <laughs> it started to rain. So once we had gotten our fill of the warmth and put out our fire nice and safe, it was time to just kind of snuggle into the car and put up the hood and just appreciate the rain from the warmth of our blankets. We were just sitting there with the hood open, watching as the fog rolled over the lake and the lights cast the most beautiful reflection across the water. We did some more reading in the car that night and eventually fell asleep. The morning was gloomy and a little bit damp and absolutely everything that I could have hoped for. Like I said earlier, willow trees are my absolute favorite and I was not expecting to get to be surrounded by one of my favorite most beautiful trees ever on this camping trip, but I was and they were all growing really close to the water reflecting over and it was fantastic. Last night Cage had done a nighttime dip in the water because he really likes cold swimming. <laughs> I am not that kind of person, but I was very, very happy for him. And while he stayed in the car and got a little bit more sleep, I just got to wander the campground alone and look at the ducks and watch the clouds as they stayed really close to the mountainside. I feel like I hardly ever slow down or give myself moments for silence. So when I'm able to actually like kind of center myself and appreciate them, it is a really, really special time. When Cage finally did get up, we got our breakfast started, watched a little bit of the ducks waddle around our campground, and then just sat back in our camping chairs to wait until the orchard opened. The ducks waddling around were the absolute sweetest, and it was really wonderful to get to be in our toasty warm blankets and scarves as the clouds and the fog just rolled over the countryside. There were thick bushes of thistles around us, cattails, and all sorts of beautiful aquatic plants. I got to sit there and read this kind of compilation book that had a lot of dark and spooky poetry. One of my favorites was about these kind of monster dinosaur children. But I love books of short stories and compilations and stuff like that, especially for little trips like this where you have an hour here or there to kill and just a little bit of time to to get to read something. 
Eventually, it was time and we could head over to the orchard. Last year when we had gone, it was apple picking time, but this time it was pumpkin picking. So we got our drinks all sorted. I had this little apple juice and a hot apple cider and a little pumpkin shaped juice sippy cup that was full of fresh squeezed apple juice. And we got to wander around the farm. We headed into the barn and there was an incredible surprise. <laughs> this kitty that we had met last year, whose name was Rocky, had had kittens and I think there were about five of them. They were all so sweet and itty bitty. There was like a tiny Siamese one, little gray one, little tap, like just all the sweetest angelic little babies in the world. I love cats as you probably know and I work with them <laughs> in my everyday, but I never work with like kittens this young so it was just really really fun to see. They're so funny when they're this age, just like so playful and um, like trying to scare each other. At one point I put my camera down on the ground <laughs> and this one kitty was definitely having a really good time playing with the camera strap. I think it was one of the cutest moments of the trip, just having this little tabby be the director. <laughs> for a moment so that was really really fun i had to um remove it though from his hands before we caused too much damage because i do really like my camera and i didn't want him to run away with it too far um but yeah it was really really fun um we got to also visit the goats that are around um i don't know if any of them were the same that we met last year but it was really really fun to see farm animals are so absolutely sweet and i know cage had an extra special bond with these two goats i think they were some of the sweetest most like cuddly goats that we had ever met and cage just sat there for probably like 10 minutes giving them chin and head scratches it was very very sweet and i know normally he finds them like a little bit freaky because of their eyes but i think the more we see them the more um the more he grows an appreciation for them so that was really really sweet to see i couldn't pick a favorite farm animal they're all just so so incredible but goats are definitely just like fantastic especially like given their kind of spooky connotations with like their cloven hooves and the horns and the eyes like that and all that so it was really cool they also had some little silky chickens which are those like super fluffy ones with like the really fluffy little feet i grew up with chickens and i remember we had a silky at a lot for a while and she was fantastic there was also some donkeys which are absolutely incredible um and we got to just wander around and say hi to all the wonderful animals. I don't think there's anything that can make a person happier than spending like a little bit of time playing with kittens. Like it's too much. It's too much for this world. And I, 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 yeah, it was so incredibly special to see. I was so happy that we went when we did. They were really at that age when they just have those like little tiny tails that like are little triangles. Oh, just like tiny little potatoes. So, so fun. We also got to meet some really beautiful birds like turkeys and some other chickens and they have all these really wonderful photo ops set up all over the place a lot of them involving a lot of pumpkins and flowers and we just got to like set up and take all sorts of little cute videos and pictures around one of my favorite things they have there is the pumpkin band which is all these animatronic pumpkins that play a little bit of music and i got to go dance with them for a little while it was super fun to just wander around and appreciate all the beautiful autumn colors the overcast weather um, all the effort that they just put into making the place really cute and fun it's a delight to get to visit this place and i remember last year when we had gone we were like we need to make this an annual tradition and i'm so happy that it is this way it's quite a drive i won't lie um driving about like six or seven hours just to visit a pumpkin patch for about 30 minutes seems a little bit not like the most smart idea but it brings me so much joy and there was just like nothing i don't know there's just like something about this experience that i I would give anything for. Cage and I also had to participate in our little duck race. Uh, we collect rubber ducks, so we made sure to grab one from the duck vending machine and to keep him for next year. We got a duck and it was off to race him on the little water spout. I only had one tootie, so it was a solo duck race, but that's okay. It's still really fun to get to do that. And it was just really wonderful to walk around the beautiful forest and park area that they had set up, all their displays of the pumpkins and the squash and the gourds. They have this really fun little kind of farmhouse town set up outside and one thing that I hadn't noticed is that when you go inside they have a miniature version of it set up that's like a little tiny train or like tractor thing that goes around and it's like a copy of the outside that's so cute I love miniatures 
we got to spend a little bit of time in the store and they have a lot of very sweet sort of like autumnal like rustic sort of decor pieces which aren't my style but are beautiful to look at and we did manage to get one of my favorite candles that we had gotten last year and once we had spent our time in the market we got our tickets for the pumpkin patch ride and for our pumpkin picking itself so we were set on that we had two tickets for the train and one ticket for the pumpkin <laughs> another kitty we got to visit was one that we had met last year i had asked around to a bunch of people to see what his name was but no one seemed to know regardless he's this incredibly handsome siamese and i remember him being a lot lighter last year when we had seen him and i looked it up and apparently siamese cats get darker as the weather gets colder did you know that? Am I the only one who didn't know that? Th that's so cool. I, I was really excited to, to, to find that out. But anyway, we spent a lot of time giving him pets and snuggles. I'm guessing he's the daddy of the kittens um, that are around and it was just so fun to get to visit him again. He's such a sweetheart. I Like I said, I love cats. Um, Siamese cats and tuxies have like such a special place in my heart. I just think they're so beautiful. So it was really, really cool to see. <laughs> I also love how Cage loves cats. I remember one of the first times I realized how in love with him I was, was seeing him interact with Lemon. Lemon is his cat that is now our cat, but um, she was just his before he met me, obviously. And seeing him with her made me just like fall in love with this guy. So it's always fun when I get to see him with a cat and I'm like, oh, that's my person. That's my guy. It's so fun. We wandered around the market a little bit more just to look at all the beautiful um, displays that they had made. And eventually we were on our tractor ride. This was so, so cool. It's about a 15 minute ride and you get to drive by all these wonderful orchards, scarecrows, all the different trees and fruits that they have. It was wonderful to see the leaves falling everywhere and like I could see a couple of plums here, a couple of apples there. Last year it was fantastic to go apple picking, but it was really, really cool to get to experience a new crop this year, which was obviously the pumpkin crop. I'd never been to a proper pumpkin patch. Like all the quote unquote pumpkin patches I'd been to were just when they put a bunch of pumpkins in a field and you get to like pick one, but these ones were like growing off the vine. Not all of them, to be fair, a lot of them had either been cut or the vine had dried up, which to what I understand makes it actually easier. Um, but near the bottom, it was a lot of cut pumpkins and near the top, it was a lot of them still growing on the vine. So we did our good wandering around and there were so many beauties to see. There is something about pumpkin fields, like a real one, that's so magic. All of the different color gradients, the flowers everywhere, the fact that they grow like these kind of fantasy fruits, the way that they have the vines like all around, it, it truly feels like being in a fairy tale. We did only buy a ticket to pick one pumpkin and we had picked our man together. It was this really wonderfully shaped one. Um, it was $6 no matter what size of pumpkin you got. So we tried to pick a big one, but it was really hard to choose. There were so many wonderful ones. This one had definitely called our name though. And it was wonderful to see all of the other pumpkins in the field um, waiting for their family to pick them. The sunflowers that they had planted there were bigger than any I'd ever seen before. And I just had such a fun time tromping through the pumpkin patch with my little vest on and getting to like look at all the beautiful ones and smell the flowers and be like, oh, is this one better? No, no, I still like mine. Yeah, it was really, really cool. The, the view from there was incredible. And though I think I preferred apple picking to pumpkin picking just because there was more to do, I wouldn't have traded this for anything. It was so cool. There were a couple of people on the train with us and a lot of people from like England, so it was really fun to listen to the accents. I really, really enjoyed this experience and I think next year it will be so cool to go between seasons, like to have one day of apple picking and one day of pumpkin picking. That's my absolute dream, but we'll see, we'll see if it happens. The tractor driver also offered to take a picture of us, so we got our nice little 2023 matching vest pictures. Um, yeah, like I've mentioned, I have a video on how I made these vests, but it was just really cool to get to wander around and, and uh, pick out our pumpkins together. When we got back to the main area, it was time to get stocked up on other things. So we got a giant tub of apple juice, a bunch of pears, lots of little pumpkins, big pumpkins, ones to decorate with, ones to eat. It was really, really fantastic to get to experience them all. There's so many different colors and varieties and I get in awe of them every year that we see them. It's one thing when you go to the grocery store and there's just like one type of orange pumpkin to pick from and like maybe a couple of little squash and gourds, but this just feels like you are in the wonderland of the pumpkin and you get to have every choice under the 
sun. The really minty green ones, it was our first year getting one of those, as well as like the kind of pale pinkish ones, so that was really, really fun. And the mini ones are always my absolute favorite. There's just something so adorable about a miniature pumpkin, and then so impressive about the big ones. Oh my god, I think these were some of the biggest pumpkins I've ever seen. Like, you can see my hand for scale. That was wild. And they wanted $30. Like, that is the biggest pumpkin ever, and they only wanted $30 for it. That is intense to me. <laughs> This is like Cinderella level pumpkins. It was almost time to get on the road, so we got one final snack, a giant pretzel for Cage with some hot apple cider for me and a caramel apple cider for him. I'm vegan while he's vegetarian, so sometimes I get things without the dairy while he still can, but oh, it looked so tasty. And then we were on the road to go back home. I have to say, it was so sad, guys. When I say it was snowing on our way back, snowing and fogging and raining and just, I was like, okay, I get it. Like, we had our time. We had our nice autumn time. It's done now. Um, yeah, guess who had winter tires on, though? Not me. Absolutely not me. Um, so I definitely, I was like, can you wait till, like, October 31st at least for this? But whatever, it's fine. It was still magical in its own way to get to drive through the mountains while it was snowing and fogging listening to some Stephen King audiobooks. So that was that trip. It was an absolute delight. I treasure so much Cage and I's camping trips that we do every year. Thank you for coming along with this one, and I really hope you enjoyed. Um, that's all I got for now. I'll see you in the next one, and hope you are kind to yourself and have a great rest of the day or night or whenever it happens to be that you're watching. Bye for now.